You know that saying, the more things change, the more things stay the same? Kind of reminds me of the real estate market right now. We're taking a look at the Atlanta real estate market numbers and we're doing it right now. Let's do it. Hey, if this is your first time on this channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living, working, playing, and breathing all things Atlanta and the metro Atlanta area and the latest real estate numbers, then hit that subscription button, tap that notification bell so you can be the first to know about everything that's going on here in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Jonathan McCoy. I'm getting calls, texts, and emails from people just like you looking to make that move here to Atlanta, Georgia, and I absolutely love it. So whether you're making that move right now, a month from now, or a year from now, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. Would love to help you start you on your journey to purchasing a new home here in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, we're talking about the latest real estate numbers and let's just jump right on into it. First chart here is your single family detached homes. That's what we're starting with and we're comparing the latest numbers, which are the July numbers that just came in. This is 2023 compared to 2022. And just like we've seen all year, everything's down across the board in terms of the number of homes that are active, the number of pendings, and the number that have sold. So nothing unusual here. New year, numbers down except for one, and that's when it comes to the sales price. That's right, as we're looking at the sales prices here, the original median list price, so what people are listing the homes for, the median is $459,900. That's a little higher than it was last year. And when we're looking at the median sales price, we're looking at $452,900 compared to $450,000 last year. So we are up slightly. And this is kind of what we've seen all year long, a little bit below last year, right at last year. And now we're seeing a little bit above. And the median sales to list price ratio, we're still looking at 100%. Days on market a little higher from last year, but we're still sitting at 15 days. So again, things are coming off market pretty quickly. So where does this take us? Well, again, a lot of changing numbers here when it comes to active, pending, and sold. But when it's all said and done, prices are right where they were last year. So what's the culprit? Same culprit it has been. We have low inventory matched up with not as many buyers on the market. And these continue to collide. We don't really see any end in sight right now when it comes to this. Now we're looking at the six month trend. So let's see what's been happening over these last six months. And if you paid any attention to this channel or if you're new, uh, real estate is a seasonal um, industry. So we will see seasonality take place, especially when it comes to spring and the early to mid summer months with a lot more homes coming to the market, a lot more people active when it comes to purchasing a home. Uh, so this is what we've seen. For this year, we see uh, in February, we did have you know less homes selling here, uh, more actives. We actually had a decent number of pendings there too, but we can see this number increased going all the way to May. Now it's interesting because this seasonality kind of, kind of slowed down earlier than we normally see. Typically we see June as our peak a month with July coming close. Uh, and if you're not familiar, if you're uh, living in another state, Georgia schools typically start back uh, first of August. And so what happens is when we get closer to that time for schools to start, a lot less families are wanting to move right as schools are starting. So kids going back to school plays a huge factor when it comes to the seasonality of the market. We see when the summer hits and schools are out, we see more families starting to move. When schools start to uh, come back into play and kids are going back, we then see a slowing down in the market because families typically don't want to move during the middle of the school year. So we've seen this trend of uh, active homes um, going down slightly in April and then popping back up in all the way to July where we see 6,498 active homes on the market. So this is actually our peak uh, for what we've seen for the year. The pending number, the peak number was in May. We see 5,707 homes which we're now down to 4,989 homes pending in the month of July. So gone down a little bit. This pending ratio, again, big number to look at when you start seeing what's happening in our market. Uh, we're at 43.4% of homes uh, that are on the market have gone under contract. This still is a really high number. Um, typically, as we get to a more normal market, these are in the 30s, this number. So 43.4%, really high. When we look at June and July, we're seeing a number of homes sold practically the same, 3,319 in June and 3,313 in July. We do see the peak though actually happened in May um, at 3,598. So again, slightly unusual for what we typically see, but 
It's about on. Now, failed listings we're starting to see go back up. 26.8% of the homes that went on market actually failed to sell and came off market. Now, some of these people put their home back in the market. Others just stay off and take it off. And then months of supply. We see we're now up to 2.0 months. Uh, still super low, still very much a seller's market. And then again, we already talked about the sales price here. Um, and median dailies on market is 15. So homes are still going uh, relatively fast. So as you take a look at these numbers, be prepared once August and September numbers hit that these numbers of active pending, pending ratio sold, they're likely to go down some. Uh, the median sales price is likely to go down as well some. What can happen in these months? Actually, I think August and September are really good home months to uh, buy homes. And the reason why is you do get the distraction of school starting back. And so you'll see homes all of a sudden start sitting on the market late longer. Um, and generally, real estate agents, especially those that haven't been through markets like this before, aren't used to this, uh, that aren't seasoned agents or just sellers, they start getting nervous when the August and September months hit if they're listing a home because all of a sudden, the number of people coming to look at the home just drops. Um, happens every normal year we have. We're going to throw out the pandemic years, but every normal year we have, we are typically going to see a drop in August and September. And this actually could be a great time to purchase a home if you're still looking for a home. You can actually have a lot less competition, still have a good number of homes on the market compared to other months in the year. So you have more homes on the market and then you have less competition. Uh, so you do have the opportunities if you're patient to bring down the price some of homes that are on the market right now. So if you see one you like and if they're kind of sticking at their price, give it a few weeks. Um, give that lack of uh, number of showings and lack of any offers coming in a chance. Now, homes will still sell. So, you know, if you're if that's your only strategy is just to wait and you think it's absolutely going to be there still, then. Don't be surprised if it's not, especially if it's a great home. So I'm not telling you on every home this is a situation. But if you have one that's been on the market 14, 21 days, still around the same price, you're liking it, but don't want to pay the price that it's listed at, this is where you can start to negotiate those down. All right, now we're looking at single family detached homes and month supply based on your price points here. And you can see deeply in the seller's market, from that 2 million all the way down. So if you're looking at anything at 2 million and down, you are still in a seller's market. Uh, so if you're selling, that's great. If you're buying, again, limited inventory. And where we wanna focus at for the, you know, person out there that's looking at the median sales price, which is in the 450 range here in Georgia right now in Atlanta area, you're at 1.8 months of inventory. You're still, you're still low. And this is what continues to keep these prices uh, where they are at. Um, but if you are looking over uh, $2 million, you start to get into a balance market and at $3 million and over, you're getting into a buyer's market. Uh, really volatile here when it comes to the changing in numbers, just because there's not a ton of 2 million plus homes compared to the homes we're seeing that are, are under that price. Also wanted to take a quick look at condos and townhomes here. So that's what these numbers are here. And uh, it's quite interesting uh, for July 2022 for compared to 2023 in the single family detached homes. We've seen a lot of uh, these numbers go down, but it's interesting in the um, condo and townhome market. We uh, we see the active listings actually being right around the same. Um, so that's a, a little interesting number there. Uh, pending is down, number of solds is down, but interesting number that the active number is pretty much where we were um, a year ago. And sales prices have come up a pretty good bit. We went from 330 last year now to 349. One thing to point out, I think that's playing a big factor here is because single family detached homes, there are a lot of first time home buyers that these prices just aren't doable for them at the median sales price of 450. And a lot of them have gone to the townhome condos for those that just want to purchase a home. So I think that's why we're seeing a bump in these sales for townhomes and condos is that's where the single family detached home owner or potential owner wants to go, can't, then goes to townhomes and condos to try it out. Biggest thing playing a factor there is, yes, the overall sales price might be lower for a condo or townhome, but when you get hit with the HOA fees that are monthly, depending on which community you're living in, this can drive that price to be just as much as a single family detached home, if not more. I mean, because there are communities that have HOAs and 
three, four, five hundred dollars per month. So add that on to your mortgage payment. And now you're paying just as much, if not more, for that four hundred fifty thousand dollar home. All right, days on market here. We're looking at sixteen days on market for condos and townhomes. All right, six months trend here. Um, again, uh, when it comes to seasonality, there is some in the townhome uh, and condo area, but not even close as much as you see in single family detached homes. Uh, so what you see here is, I think it's a little bit more accurate depiction on what's happening in our market. Um, it, Cause you can see the active homes, yeah, it goes up some, but look, active homes in February was 1,865. Now they're 1,999. That's not much of a difference. Pending 1720 goes up to the 1943 range in May where we saw the same boost um, that we saw in single family detached homes, but still at 1700 in July. Uh, pinning ratio, it's just, it's just not as much of a roller coaster here as we've seen in the single family detached homes. And then uh, median sales price, 340,000 back in February. We see it dip down March, go back up in April, May and June, and then dip back down in July. Um, so, 349 is where we sit right now in July. So the, the condo and townhome market's still active, but again, our inventory is still low. We're at 2.1 months of inventory for condos and townhomes as well. So what does this all mean to you? Well, if you're a seller, you can still sell a home. Uh, you just can't go too crazy with the price, uh, especially right now. Again, once it's August, September months hit, you see a lull. It happens every normal year, and we're going to see it this year too, it looks like but um, you still have control. And, and what we're seeing here is we're seeing, again, the collision of sales prices, inventory, and interest rates, okay? There are a lot of people that just don't wanna sell. They're gonna stay in their home right now because they have such a low interest rate from the years past. They have equity in their home. There's no need, they don't have to move. So they're just not. You don't see that person that just doesn't have to move really actively trying to put their home on the market and go grab a home. You're seeing people that have to move right now move because with the sales price going up so high, comparatively speaking over the past few years and the interest rate now above seven again, those things are making it really hard on buyers, but we have such low inventory and you're always gonna have buyers in any market. I don't care what market you look at it. You look at the crash that happened in 08 and um, 07, 08 to 09, look at, 2010, 11, 12, there's still a lot of homes that sold them. There were just a lot of people that didn't have any equity in their home. So that was the biggest issue. There's just a ton of homes on the market, but there were still plenty of buyers. Right now, we don't have a lot of homes on the market, but there's still plenty of buyers out there. So that inventory is still going to keep a grasp on the sales prices. Don't expect sales prices to drop drastically at all right now. Don't expect interest rates to all of a sudden plummet either. I think you know, these predictions at the beginning of the year, I, I was talking about home prices. I thought home prices would either stay even in Atlanta area or slightly go up. Not like a number of people that kept talking about crashes. Nope, I, that's what I thought. Interest rates, that's that's not my lane. I stay in the real estate lane, but as I read about the interest rates from the beginning of the year, everybody kept talking about the five and a half interest rate by the end of the year and kept saying that that was gonna happen. Well, we're now midway through the year and we're still in the sevens and I have a hard time seeing that we're going to get any lower than maybe six and a half by the end of the year unless something major happens in the economy we're in a tug of war right now and it just there's no end in sight as of right now we're going to see not a lot of buyers not a lot of sellers prices staying about where they're at interest rates staying about where they're at if we could ever get interest rates below six i think we would have then a lot more activity in the market but until that time this is kind of what you're going to see so you want to get uh, the best price possible for a house. Again, now might be the time to do so. Be patient. There still can be competition for homes. I saw a listing just the other day from someone in my office that uh, went on the market, had multiple offers in the first weekend, went well over the sales price of the home. So that still can happen. Also seeing beautiful homes go on the market. They try to, try, try to price it too aggressively and they're just sitting there right now. So. If you're looking for a home, want a deal uh, on a home, look for those homes that are 30, 60, 90 days on market, especially right now when you just all of a sudden see a lot less people looking, a lot less offers. Right now could be a great time to uh, snatch up a home and depending on your price point, 
you know, save two, 3% off the sales price of the home just because that you're patient. But for a buyer, you gotta be patient. For a seller, just know that this is coming. You've gotta be patient too. If you're wanting that price um, that you uh, are looking for, it is gonna take a little longer than you would normally think. So you need to be patient too. And really it's gonna be a competition between whose patience uh, will pay off. So once again, if you're looking to make a move right now, whether you're buying or selling, uh, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I'd love to talk with you more about uh, moving in or out of uh, Metro Atlanta. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.